Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is have a look at creating a texture, uh, a wood texture, to create like a plank of wood uh, out of this uh, um, <coughs> cuboid uh, that we've got here. Um, so what I've done is I've already done a UV map for this, and what you'll notice in the UV map here, um, rather than having all the sides stitched together, I have separated the sides uh, just to make things easier uh, for me to actually um, uh, uh, create the texture that I want okay so um, I've already uh, clicked this button here to create a snapshot of the UV layout and I've now got that open in Photoshop so here we are so this is the UV snapshot uh, opened up in Photoshop um, through my workflow here I'm using uh, TIFFs so my UV layout was uh, outputted as a TIFF and then the textures I'm going to create I'm going to create the textures as a TIFF as well uh, some people that you like to use targas I think targa and TIFF are both appropriate formats to use for this sort of purpose um, my preference is for a, a TIFF okay so um, what we're going to do is, um, one of the things I like to do is just kind of, uh, when I bring it in, it tends to be uh, locked, okay, the background here locked, so I'm just going to double click on this and just click uh, OK just to unlock it so that, that padlock is removed, so it looks like I haven't done anything, but all I'm saying is I want this to act as a normal layer, so I just double click, click OK, and that will become a normal layer inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to try and go a little bit slowly for those that aren't familiar with Photoshop um, uh, uh, with this. So what I've got is I've downloaded some textures uh, that I want to use. So these are my various wood textures that I want to use. So um, I want to use this for the general kind of wood, uh, sort of base wood if you like. Okay, I'm going to use this one here for the ends of the plank. And then I'm going to use this one here because I want a couple of add a couple of cracks and bits and pieces to it as well. Okay, just to show you kind of different techniques that we can use when we're doing UV mapping. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, one of the things I like to do here is uh, set the blend mode uh, of this layout here to um, uh, difference. Here we go. OK, and uh, you'll see why that is in a moment. But basically, it just means that when I start creating my texture, uh, I will still be able to see these layout lines over the top of that texture. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to come into this uh, wood texture here. I just want to zoom in on it a little bit. So I'm just going to click on it just to see it in a bit more detail. Uh, probably don't need to see it that much. OK. And then what I'm going to do is, so I'm just using the magnifying tool to do that. And then what I'm going to do is, in Photoshop, all your, you've got your selection tools here. So the selection tools allow you to cut bits out of an image, okay? So here we've got our marquee selection tools. That's like basically your rectangle and your ellipse, okay? Uh, rectangle is the main one you're going to be used. And then if you want to do a selection of kind of um, irregular shapes, if you will, uh, then you've got tools here, which are things like the polygon uh, la you've got the lasso tool and you've got the polygon lasso tool as well. So you've got different lasso tools for selecting irregular shaped objects, by which I mean kind of you, you can, they're not square or rectangle, they're like this sort of shape or something, irregular. Okay. Uh, um, I'm just going to remove this selection here just by going select. So anything you want to do with a selection, um, so that might be invert a selection or deselect a selection, or refine the edge, maybe um, spread the selection out, or, or, or uh, feather a selection, whatever you want to do with it, or even transform a selection. So you can do that here. Okay, can all be done in this selection menu here. So that's a useful menu to know. Um, so in here, I'm going to go, I'm just going to press enter to finish doing my transform on the selection. And then what I'm going to do is go deselect to, 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 to set that again. Uh, this, uh, these options here relate to color based selection. Okay, so you can select based on color. Uh, we're not going to be using that uh, here, but that's something else that you can do as well. So I'm just going to take the marquee selection tool, and what I want to do is just select one of these planks. So I'm going to select here. You can see that uh, this is made up of planks with sort of fine uh, differences between them there. Okay, um, and I just want to make sure this selection isn't going over the border there. So what I might do is again just go into my transform selection and just move this selection up a little bit uh, because in fact I might just make it a little bit narrower just to make my life a little bit easier 
Okay, so now I've got that selection there. Um, I'm just going to press enter to select that selection. And now what I want to do is move this. I want to copy this selection here onto my texture file. So I'm going to go control C and then go into my uh, layout, my plank layout that I've got here and go control V. Okay, and you can see that's on here and it's added it as a new layer. You can see to my scene. Okay, and what I can do is with this layer selected, Okay, so the layer, so you can see every time I add something to this scene, it creates a layer. So with that layer selected, if I go Control T, that will pull up the transform tool. Uh, that's the same as going edit, uh, edit, free transform. And if there's other transforms that we want to do, um, so it might be that you want to distort or change the perspective of a, of a texture to fit um, uh, a particular need. Uh, or you, uh, uh, or you want to warp it or something. Um, so these are these are uh, beyond the straightforward scale and rotate uh, and move transforms that we can do with the free transform tool. There are other transforms available in there as well. Okay, but what we're doing here, Control T, is your free transform that allows us to move, scale, and rotate this plank. Okay, so I'm going to take this plank, and what I'm going to do is put it in a corner here. Okay and I'm going to go and scale it. Um, now, it depends. Uh, sometimes I might be um, uh, uh, particularly concerned when I'm working with a texture to keep it in scale or to keep the aspect ratio. You can see here I can scale and I can change the aspect ratio of this. And I think in the case of wood, I don't think that's going to cause me a problem. Um, but if I did want to keep the aspect ratio, I could just go shift hold down shift as I do the transform and it will maintain the aspect ratio for me. Okay, so there we go. Right. So, um, excellent. Um, and I'm just going to press enter. Now you'll see that uh, our, our layout here isn't really showing through and that's purely because I've got to change the order. I want to keep this layer on top. So if I move that to the bottom, now that I've moved this layer to the bottom, so you can see I can move these layers around. And these layers are kind of what makes Photoshop a bit more complex to work with, uh, but also is really the power of Photoshop as well. So I'm going to move this layer below and you can see when this layer is below, I can still see the layout over the top of it. And that's because I've selected uh, on this layer here, on the layout layer, okay, this difference. And in fact, I'm just going to, you can also name the layers as well. So I'm going to call it layout, okay, or UV layout. Okay, just so it's clear what we've got there, okay? Excellent. And I can obviously turn these, the visibility of these layers on and off as well as needed. Okay, so I'm going to do the same process with uh, these other bits as well. Um, and uh, so all I'm going to do is just go into my wood texture. I'm just going to use the marquee tool to cut a bit of wood out. Here we go. And then just lay it back into our... Uh, 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 lay it onto our uh, UV layout again. And you can see it's already added it to the top here. If I can just move it below, okay? Uh, and then I can just use my Control T again just to kind of move this around and get it scaled and correct, okay? Excellent. So I'm going to do the other elements, and what I'll do is I'll pause while I'm doing that so you don't have to watch me do that. Okay, so now that I've um, added all my elements, uh, um, all, all my bits of texture to here, uh, one of the things to note is when, I, when I'm selecting texture files for this sort of purpose, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to look for flat textures. So textures that are flatly lit um, uh, because I don't want the uh, light that was actually lighting up the texture to affect my render. So I want them flat and evenly lit. Um, and obviously a good resolution as well. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is I'm sort of selecting um, for each side of my plank, I'm, I'm selecting different bit of wood, okay? Um, because obviously I don't want it to appear like the texture's repeating in any way. Um, if I didn't have as much as this, I could rotate or flip um, the, the, some of the wood to, re, re, to avoid it looking like it's repeating as well, or maybe combine some bits of wood and use the clone tool to kind of blend them together. Again, to avoid it looking like I'm repeating the same elements. Uh, so those tricks are quite common as well. Um, and obviously you can see I've used the wood end bits here as well for uh, 
uh, this bit of the texture as well. So now what I've got is I've kind of got my base wood color, okay? Uh, and then what I want to do is I, I don't need all of these layers. It's going to be very clumsy for me to work with all these layers. So one thing I could do is I could group all these layers. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and merge them down into one layer. So I'm going to select all the layers and I'm going to go right click and merge layers okay um, but think twice before you merge layers because um, uh, it is you can't undo that action again so you know sometimes what I might do is just copy all the layers and put them in a group just in case I want them again uh, for example um, uh, if I'm feeling like I'm not sure whether I I, 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 I might want to go back to them um, so yeah so that's our kind of base layer here um, let's have a look what that looks like on our wood so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn the UV uh, layout off okay and I'm simply going to go file save as and I'm going to go save it as a tiff so I'm going to call it plank uh, diff and I'm saving it directly into my Maya, the sources image source images of my Maya project here because I'm using a Maya project. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, plank uh, diff. So that's my plank diffuse uh, that I'm referring to there. I go save and go OK and click OK. Right. Okay. And then let's go into Maya. Okay. And I'm going to create a new material. So I'm going to go uh, so go into object mode. And just go assign new material and I'm going to assign a um, I'm going to use the Arnold renderer so click on Arnold and I'll just use the AI standard surface shader you could pretty much use that for everything uh, once you know how to sort of tweak that shader and um, Myers does its usual thing where it kind of just goes off to uh, it, it's focused on the cube in, in the attribute editor and I don't want that I want to bring up the material so if I go right click again and just click material attributes that will bring up the, the AI standard surface shader that I've just created here I could just call that uh, wood okay uh, just so I know what the material is and I'm going to click color Oh, sorry I'm gonna click on this checker next to the color so that I can associate the image that I've just created with the color attribute and I'm just gonna click on this folder uh, notice I should just stand back here actually if I just go back into material attributes I'm just going to take a step back here just to explain what I've done there okay so uh, let's do that again uh, okay material attributes right and um, so if I click on this checker pattern what I'm saying is I want to use an image um, uh, I want to base the color attribute on an image and there's a number of ways that I can create that image in Maya there's various sort of generative textures that we can use um, uh, and, and you can use these but obviously if you're in a game pipeline or something like that you'll need to bake these out because obviously it's creating these on the fly for you within Maya uh, so you'll need to bake these out so that it can be seen within uh, the games engine okay but we're going to use a file so we're going to take an external file uh, the wood file that we've just created or the the plank diffuse file that we've created and use that so I'm going to click file click on this folder icon and then just go um, uh, right uh, there should be hang on okay so I want to select the plank tiff file that I've just created here okay and I'm going to click open and what I need to do is just switch on my texture shading okay and we can see what this is going to look like uh, in our view okay excellent okay so that's great and I think that's a really good uh, a really good starting point I want this to kind of look a little bit old and a little bit worn okay so I kind of want to make it feel like there's some stains on this on this wood here okay so I kind of want to paint some stains on so the way I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to go back into Photoshop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer uh, over the top of this uh, and now or what I could do is I could create I could get like a dirt texture or maybe even a concrete texture or something like that and then use that as something that I could paint on as well um, but what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to generate a I'm just going to generate a, 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 a cloud texture within uh, Photoshop and I think that will do the job that I want so I'm going to create a new um, layer here okay so an empty layer uh, I just make sure that's positioned here. So that's going to be this layer here. Um, oh, I had to restart the project. So I'm just going to re just call this uh, UV 
layout here. Okay, uh, great. So this will be uh, our uh, our kind of stain, as it were. Okay, so with this layer selected, I'm going to draw a marquee over the whole of this area here and just generate a cloud over the top of this. So uh, what I could do is inside a filter, most of these filters are here are to apply effects to an existing image or an existing or, or a selected layer. Um, um, uh, but in this case, uh, but you can also in this render uh, uh, set here, these can actually generate uh, effects as well. So I want to go clouds, okay, and it's going to kind of, kind of generate this kind of cloud effect here. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use change the blend mode here to overlay. OK, so you can kind of see all oh, it's putting like a stain effect on here and it's quite effective. But obviously, I don't want that applied to the entire wood. And that's kind of also it's a little bit aggressive as it is right now. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mask. So I'm going to mask this layer, this um, cloud layer out. In fact, I'm going to call it stain. I'll call it stain and then I'm going to call this base. This is our base color. OK, so what I want to do is I want to mask the stain out and then paint the stain back in where I want to see it. And this technique is used a lot for texturing. Where, you know, if I want to do like a metal texture and I want to put a bit of rust or wear on the corners of a piece of metal, then I can use this technique to kind of paint in, uh, paint back in some rust on the corners, uh, the edges uh, of the metal or, or, or you know, on the uh, at, at the edges on the UV layout. OK, um, same thing I was doing, say, uh, a dirt path or some grass or something where I wanted bits of dirt to show through or bits of different layers of dirt or whatever to come through. Uh, again, I can paint those. I, I can add a layer on top, mask it out and paint it through. So let me demonstrate how that works. OK, so with the stain layer selected, what I'm going to do is go layer uh, and I'm going to go layer mask. So in this menu is everything about sort of. Um, working with layers, um, I would suggest and tell you really familiar with layers. There's a lot here that might be quite confusing, uh, but we're just going to go layer mask and we're just going to go hide all. OK, so what's happened is it's hidden that stain layer completely. OK, um, and it's created this sort of black um, uh, this black uh, cube next to it. Now, what this black cube represents is the mask. OK, so where the mask is black, that's where we're not going to see the stain. So hence, we're not seeing the stain at all. But if I now that I've got the mask selected, so you'll notice that if I click here, I can select the layer, uh, the actual layer itself, or I can select its mask. OK, so with the mask selected, if I start painting white in there, it will start revealing that stain. So what I can then do is I can I want to paint white in there. So I'm going to make sure I've got white selected as my brush color here. So uh, it's this front color that I want. So you've got a front and a back color. It's the foreground color that we're painting there. So I've got that selected. And now what I want to do is I want to use a brush. OK, so I'm going to select a brush and let's have a look at our brush size. That looks pretty good. But what I want to do is if you haven't got it quite this size, what you want to do is just make sure you've got it a good size like this. OK, so, you know, 90 pixels, something like that. And the main thing is make it soft. So it's very uh, so make sure it's a, a very soft um, uh, uh, brush as well. Uh, I'm trying to think now. I think hardness, if I turn that down, I think that should give me a soft brush. OK, so now what I can do is paint in. Can you see I can paint in that stain? OK, um, I just think it's not hugely effective at the moment. I could do with a bigger brush, I think, OK, to make that more effective. There we go. And you can see I can just sort of paint in the stain on this and it should look kind of fairly natural what I'm doing here. OK, um, I might reduce the size of this. And obviously, I'm kind of rushing this a little bit because. Uh, but it gives the texture a bit of variation. OK, great. And I might just do the same on this bit as well. There we go. OK, OK, so. It just gives the, the, the it just gives it a little bit of texture as well. And again, it's good looking at some reference images to kind of think where that staining would be. OK, but you can see it's just giving it's making the texture pop out a little bit. So now if I go, um, uh, I'm going to go save this to diffuse again. And let's have another look inside of Maya. Uh, and reload that texture. OK, 
there you are and you can see I think that's kind of helping is helping bring the wood effect in it a little bit more um, I, I could have built I, I could bring this in a little bit softer and refine it but I think that'll, that that will work okay great next um Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to just bring some uh, cracks into this. So I want to take some cracks from here and add them to my wood again, just to try and make the wood feel old and give it that kind of authentic look. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, polygon selection tool because it's kind of an irregular shaped object. I'm going to zoom in on this. Sorry, I'm going to click on the uh, click on this tool, the uh, ma uh, magnifier. Click on the plus to make sure it's zooming in rather than the minus that I had selected. And then what I'm going to do is just use this lasso tool just to go around here. It doesn't need to be a fine selection. You'll see that I'm not trying to select it really fine. You could go in there and do a really fine selection. I think for my purposes, I don't need to do that. Uh, just trying to close this. Here we go. OK, so I'm just going to go control C. Uh, so I'm going to go control C. Um, and so the way that I'm going to do this, I'm just going to go control V and paste that in. OK, and it'll just add a new layer here with uh, and it'll put the crack in a new layer here. I'm just going to use the transform tool just to kind of put this on top of uh, uh, my piece of wood here. OK, now what we want to do is we want to try and blend this in. Actually, it's not doing a bad job as it is, but let's have a look. I'm just going to go uh, with my magnifier and just zoom in a little bit. OK, and have a look at it. So you can see that there's some artifacts and bits and pieces. And so this won't quite work as is. So what we want to do is um, I want to just select the blend mode. So with this crack layer selected, I'm going to go and uh, select the blend mode. And uh, let's try out, uh, I could try out overlay. Um, I don't think that's giving me what I want. I'm going to try out darken. OK, um, I think that is actually, is that better than, I think that's better. So what the darken one's doing, all it's doing is taking whatever happens to be the darkest color at that point and using that as our uh, 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 and, and so it's it's when it's blending it's taking the darkest point of either of the layers and using that uh, 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 that's what's going to be displayed or what's going to come through in the layer okay it's going to take whatever the darkest is uh, I could try darker color I think darken is the same doing very similar sort of job okay so now that we've done that what I want to do is I'm going to go into um, uh, the contrast of this. Uh, I'm going to adjust the contrast. This. I'm going to try and get rid of some of these bits of detail around the crack, um, um, which don't really fit with the wood, by uh, uh, by upping the contrast of the crack. Okay. So um, yeah, let's try that. I might. What I might do is just move this off of here, just so you can kind of see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to go into um, image. So with the layer still selected, make sure the layer is still selected. Image adjustments, brightness contrast. And what I can do is I can make this really bright and really push up the contrast. OK, and what I'm trying to do is make sure that that crack, the dark, the darkness of the crack really comes through, but also that, that the other details around it kind of disappear. OK, let's click OK and then pull that back onto my piece of wood. And you can see that that's made those details, those artifacts that we had around the edge of the crack disappear. OK, all right. So that's worked really well. OK, um, but one of the results of that is what we've had to do is by crushing the color, as it were, crushing the black, as it were, what we've ended up doing is actually, um, uh, you know, uh, making this black what we what we call really chewy. OK, so it's giving it a really chewy edge, which isn't natural. So what we could do is just grab this blur tool here. I think let's have a look. Where's the blur tool? I think this is it, the blur tool here and just blur. That's it. Just blur this down just to make this look natural again. OK, excellent. OK, so I think that's working quite well. Um, OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let's have a look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the transform tool. I'm going to go control T 
and just use the transform tool because I don't really want the crack like that. I want it kind of as a long crack somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just make it into a long crack that's kind of like this. Uh, I'm sure we'll put it in a strategic place. I'm going to put it in the part where it's kind of worn a little bit. I think that will work quite nicely. Let's have a look what that looks like uh, across the whole file. Um, so I'm just going to get the zoom. Magnify out. So there we are. You see, we've effectively added a crack to our wood there. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that with um, a couple of other cracks. Okay. Um, so I'll pause while I'm doing that. But I'm going to use the, the same technique, i.e., um, uh, 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 bring it in, use dark and blend mode, um, use the brightness contrast to kind of take out all the light details and then blur it. Uh, to remove any kind of, um, uh, to remove the sort of chewy edge, okay? Right. Okay, so I'm just going to add another crack here, but I could add more cracks. I'm not going to go overboard with this. Uh, one of the things I did want to show you is, is this crack I've added here. You can see the, the process I'm using is actually pulling out some other colours. Um, so by pushing up the brightness and the contrast as severely as I have, it's kind of pulled out other colours. Now, um, I could just go back, I could actually just redo it and see if I could get away with not pushing up the brightness and the contrast quite so much, and that might avoid the problem. Uh, another thing that I could do is if I take this layer, so these are the two layers, uh, the layers of each of the cracks that I've got in there. So this is the new crack here. This, this is the crack here that we've got here. And what I could do is with that selected, I could just go image adjustments and then just go hue saturations. All I could do is just simply desaturate it. So these color artifacts I'm seeing here, ooh, sorry, I don't want to do that. Sorry, these color facts, artifacts I'm seeing here would then disappear, yeah? So I'm just going to do a desaturation there. And I think actually just for, uh, to be sure, I'm going to do the same thing with the other crack layer there. It's going to go image, uh, uh, sorry, uh, adjustments and uh, saturation again just remove that and you can see it's getting rid of some of those artifacts for me great okay so let's have a look what that uh, looks like with the cracks in there so it's going to go file uh, save and into Maya okay and then just reload here we go and then you can see we've got our cracks in there and I think they're working pretty well okay excellent um, now what we want to do is um, we want to move on to creating our bump map for this, okay? Um, so at the moment, this is just a smooth uh, plank of wood. You can kind of see from the reflective light here. It's just a smooth plank of wood. So uh, as soon as any light reflects off this, it's kind of going to give the object away. So we need to give this a bump map. So what we can do is we can go into Photoshop and use the various filters and bits and pieces inside of Photoshop to generate a bump map from this image. So first of all, what we've got is obviously all these elements here. I'm just going to call this uh, crack. Uh, in fact, uh, crack one. And I'm going to call this crack two. So notice how I'm trying to just keep everything in here organized. Uh, so this just allows me then to come back in here and change things. I could duplicate these cracks or move them around, whatever I want to do. Um, all of these four layers effectively make up our diffuse uh, uh, channel. So what I want to do is I want to put those into a group. So I think I can select all these and can I just group layers? No, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a group. So um, I'm going to click on this folder icon here and this will create a group, okay? And I'm going to call this group uh, diff for diffuse, okay? And then I'm going to add all of these elements to this diffuse group. Here we go. So now they're all grouped under diffuse. And obviously, I want to keep my layout at the top as well. So all of those are grouped under diffuse. And I can turn all those layers on and off again as I want, okay? Excellent. Okay. Um, great. So what this allows me to do now is if I want to um, uh, create a bump map based on this diffuse channel, I can actually duplicate this entire group. So if I go right click, you can duplicate layers. Okay. We, we haven't had to do that so far, but I can go right click and I can go duplicate group. So it's going to duplicate the entire group. Uh, I'll just call it diff copy for the moment okay uh, and you can see it's duplicated it here and it's called it diff copy okay let's just 
rearrange this. So I want div copy to be below here. This is going to become bump. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click on here now and I want to click merge group. So for the purposes of the bump map, I just want to merge all of this down into one group. OK, so I'm going to go merge group and then what I'll do is I'm going to rename this bump. OK, so what I've done there is just copy that entire uh, uh, create a diffuse group, put the layers that make up the diffuse into this diffuse group, copy the group and then uh, to create the bump and then just merge all of that down into one image. OK, so I'm going to turn this off so that now that we're purely looking at our bump here. OK, uh, great. Now, there's a couple of techniques that we can use to um, create a bump map based on uh, a diffuse image. Uh, a classic technique is to simply desaturate it. So uh, with the bump layer selected, I'm just going to go uh, just like we did before. I'm going to go image adjustments, uh, hue saturation, and then just completely desaturate it. OK, so basically desaturation basically means turn it into black and white. OK, click OK. Um, uh, and then what I can do then is at the moment, this is not going to make the most effective bump map. But what I could do again is go into my uh, image adjustments, uh, brightness, contrast, and I can just shove up the contrast. So to make this kind of more of a bump map, I can kind of shove up the, the brightness and the contrast. And if I shove up the brightness, you can see that that we're really f focusing on just picking out these small details here. OK, uh, that we want here. OK, um, now it might be that that's not quite what I want. I might be that I, I do want to push the contrast up. Um, but actually, I, what I found for the for the wood texture was to have a contrast, something like this. OK, so I've pushed the contrast all the way up, but I haven't pushed all the brightness off. I've still got some details here. OK, I'm going to click OK. And then what I did was I just went into filter. Uh, uh, and what I did is I just I just applied a high pass filter to it. So if you go to others, high pass and use a radius of two. OK, uh, I found that this was really effective in getting a kind of texture that I wanted. OK, and then I kind of clicked OK. And uh, and then I'm going to use that as the basis of my bump map or as my bump map. So I'm going to go file, save as. So I don't go save because that's my diffuse at the moment. I'll go save as. OK, uh, bump, OK, save, click OK. Excellent. Let's have a look what that looks like inside of Maya. OK, so I'm going to go into here. Uh, so again, I'm going to call up my material attributes and uh, in the AI standard surface shader, um, we want to go down to the geometry tab here. OK, and it's at this point that I can go Bump mapping, click on here, and I can go, uh, I can select my uh, bump file to use for my bump mapping. So I'm going to file, uh, uh, I need to click on the file tab here. Uh, we want to come back to this bump 2D in a moment, but let's click on the file tab for the moment. File tab, go plank, bump, and click open. OK, and we can kind of see that bump map uh taking effect there okay um now uh, at the moment what we're doing is we're using viewport 2.0 to render this so you can see that this is the renderer in our viewport here uh when it comes to bump maps what i'm finding is what we see in viewport 2.0 isn't really absolutely akin to what we see in the arnold renderer so if you're planning to use the arnold renderer this is the point where you really want to start looking through the arnold renderer to fine tune your settings okay so um let's just make sure i've got it set to hd that's proper hd that i want okay great close um i'll need to add a light to our scene otherwise it'll just be a black render so i'm just going to go arnold lights i'm just going to put in a, a sky dome light okay and that'll just light it from white all the way around it'll be flat lit white all the way around that's fine uh good enough for me to kind of see what this looks like then i'm going to click on renderer render and see what this looks like okay here we go so actually um i can see that this looks pretty good um there is a lot of specular light on there um, and I'm wondering whether the, uh, so I might need to just, we are going to do a specular layer in a moment, but, uh, for the moment I might just turn that down. Uh, and I'm wondering whether the bump map's just a little bit too severe. So I might just 
turn that bump map down. So um, what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, see if I can just minimize this. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's move that over to here. Great. So what I want to do is I want to go right click. Uh, I want to go material attributes and I'm just going to take this specular color. OK, just reduce the weight of the specular color for a moment just so that I'm not seeing too much of that. Um, I want there to be a bit, but not too much. Uh, so we get an idea of what the wood's going to look like. Um, and then what I can do is I want to go back to my bump here. So the geometry, go back to my bump. I'm going to click on this icon here. OK, and uh, OK, hasn't quite took me to where I want to go. So what I want to do is I want to get the bump node that's being used in this shader network. So to get to that, I'm going to have to go through the hypershade. So I'm going to open up hypershade. I was trying to avoid doing that. Here's our wood texture. Click on the wood texture. Go graph it. Go graph input output connections. Here we go. And it's this bump 2D node that I want. So if I click on there, great. That's the node I want. Okay. And what I want to do is I can adjust the depth of this. So if I I can make the bump more severe. Okay. So you can see I can make that bump look more severe. Or I can kind of reduce that bump down. So I could kind of, if I go uh, sort of 0.2, I can reduce that bump right down. So it's almost sort of glossy. Okay. So I kind of feel like actually, I'm going to just try sort of 0.5 and see what that looks like. So for me, that feels about right for my for my bump map. I'm getting sort of the details that I want in the bump there. I might try. I might just go back towards one, maybe. Okay. So I've just sort of refined that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've got it about bump two. Okay. Um, again, try. You know, one of the things is you, you can end up a classic thing that you end up doing is being a bit too severe with the bumps, with the bump maps, and 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 being a bit too aggressive with it. So just be careful you're not being too aggressive with it. But I think that will work for us. Okay. And I might come back to that once we've got our specular in there. Okay. So that's our bump map done. Okay. Um, great. OK, so I'm going to go back into Photoshop now. So we've got a diffuse. We've got a bump map. Now we want to create our specular there. Now, at this point, what I want to point out is at the moment, what we've been doing is just outputting TIFFs. And what Photoshop does is basically it will set it will output a TIFF based on what layers we've got visible at the time. So because we've got the bump, bump visible, it's effectively just outputting the bump layer as a TIFF. OK, if I had the diffuse visible, what would happen is all these layers inside this diffuse are basically merged down into a single TIFF. The key thing to be aware of is that these layers are not saved within the TIFF file. So it's very important that I save a Photoshop file, okay, uh, version of this to preserve all of these layers so that so that while I'm using the TIFFs as my textures to actually have a, a file that I can edit and come back to, I probably want to use these uh, use this TIFF. OK, uh, I'll probably sorry. Yeah, I probably want to use. Um, uh, sorry, I want I, I, I probably want to use a Photoshop file or save this as a Photoshop file. So I'm going to file, save as. Uh, and I'm just going to go and save it as a Photoshop file. And I'll just call it plank mat for plank material. OK, save. OK. And so all the elements of that material are inside of this Photoshop file. Great. OK, so. Um, OK, so to create a specular, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically do a very similar thing to what we did with the diffuse layer. I think that's going to be a pretty good way of going about this. So again, I'm just going to go right click, uh, duplicate the group, go OK. Uh, let's just move this group right down to the bottom here. Uh, and then I'm going to go right click and just merge the group down. So that's now all merged into one uh, into one thing. Just make sure that I'm only viewing that. 
and then I'm just going to call this spec for specular. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is do that same method. I'm going to go adjustments, uh, hue saturation, uh, desaturate. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is up the contrast a little bit. Um, so, uh, in fact, actually, no, I don't want to up the contrast because what I want to do with the specular is I want to go the opposite way. I don't want, for the bump map, I wanted it to be contrasty. Uh, for the specular, I didn't want it to be contrasty. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, uh, uh, I'm going to put in a, uh, a, a black layer and layer and merge that in over the top. So I'm going to create a new layer. Okay. Select this entire area. And I want to fill this entire area with black. Okay. So I'm going to select black. Make sure black selected as my color. It is. And then just use the bucket tool. So it's this bucket tool here. Uh, with this layer, empty layer selected. Okay. Uh, to put that in there. Great. Okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to then just adjust the opacity down. And so you can see this is all this is doing is moving this towards black. OK, and it's doing it in such a way that it's it's uh, it's 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 reducing the contrast of the image, which is what I want. OK, so I think what I want is something I don't want to be too severe. I think it's something like that that I want to use for my saturation. Great. So I'm going to go file because wood isn't massively reflective. So I just want to be careful that I don't make it too reflective. Uh, in fact, that might even be a bit too much. I might just go. Let's try that. OK. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is go file, save as, and this will be our specular. And obviously, we'll make sure I go back to TIFF. Great. So that's that generated. Now I'm going to go back into my Maya file. Again, go right click, go material attributes uh, to bring up this Arnold surface shader that we're using here. And uh, I'm going to go to specular and where it says color, again, I'm going to click on this attribute here and say, right, I want the, I want to base it on a file and I'm going to base it on this plank specular file. Click open. Brilliant. Um, the other thing I want to do is if I go right click material attributes, I did turn down the specular weight right down. I think I want to turn that back up because obviously I'm reducing the specularity within the file itself. So I shouldn't need to do that, but I could be corrected. Let's see what the render looks like. OK. Here we go. OK, and that's starting to look to me like a plank and I'm getting that kind of specular reflection and that's kind of feeling looking good. OK, so, yeah, that's really where I want to take uh, uh, making this plank. The only thing I'm kind of thinking is maybe um, inside of this uh, bump layer. So I'm going to click this. Uh, this is our specular layer. So it may be that I want to merge these down into my specular layer as well. So I might just going to click both of these and just merge the layers. OK, and uh, just call that spec. OK, merge those down. Uh, all I'm thinking is with this bump layer, I would like some of these details to pop out a little bit more. So I'm very tempted to kind of again go back, do another copy of this diffuse layer. Do, uh, in fact, I might just do that. Let's do another copy of this diffuse layer. So I'm going to go right click. Um, sorry, uh, duplicate group. Click OK. Uh, here we go. Oh, what did I do there? I put the group inside the group. That's not very clever. Let's just, that's it, OK. Uh, and then just merge that down. Uh, or, yeah, sorry, merge that group down. Here we go. I think I need to, sorry, I need to make the group visible in order to merge it down. Uh, that's one thing I get caught out on. OK. Um, so I just want to, I want this copy that I've done here of the, the the diffuse group that I've merged down. I just want to use that to kind of add more detail to to the bump. OK, so I'm going to go image adjustments, uh, hue saturation. Let's desaturate do do do. And then let's go image adjustments, uh, brightness contrast. 
Let's just pull out. All I want to do is just pull out some of these darker details like that. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do, let's have a look how that looks. I want to kind of, can I just overlay that or can I just go darken? So hopefully let's see how, see how that's worked. It's kind of worked to kind of emphasize, can you see just some of the darker little noodly points that are there and bring those out a little bit. Um, maybe I could go back into, uh, let's try adjustments. Uh, if I go into levels, can I push that and make it even darker? Let's try that. So you can see I'm just trying to pull out that darkness here. So you can see there's all sorts of little tricks we can do inside of Photoshop to kind of get the adjustments that we want. Let's, uh, okay, so let's try that. I'm going to, um, I'm going to just, before I merge it down and bake it in as it were, in fact, I could just create, I might just create a bump group and put it in there. That might be a better way of doing it uh, so I can come back to it. So I'm going to create a bump group bump move that down to here and then this was like I'm gonna call this uh, I don't know uh, big bumps or cracks I don't know something like that big details okay so this is like the fine details that we got using the high pass filter and then this gives us the bigger bumps uh, that we see in the wood as well let's just put that into that layer okay and let's just go file save as and I'm going to save that as the bump map plank bump tiff save click OK and let's go back into Maya OK and I'm just going to come back to that render in a minute so what I want to do is just go back to the geometry tab and just reload that file OK um, so there's a little bit's happened. We haven't seen a lot happen there. Uh, and let's see if, if that's had a real impact on our render. I'm hoping it's going to make, hope, I'm hoping it's going to make the crack pop out a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see. And maybe what I should have done is, um, uh, maybe what I should have done is actually uh, uh, saved a copy of the previous render to compare it. But I think that's kind of helped. And it's just added a little bit more detail to the bump map as well and showing you another technique that we can use okay so i'm going to leave it there uh and that's how to um create a texture for a plank of wood using photoshop